everyone and it's about that time of the year again that we're going to be feeding our trees feeding our fruit trees and what we're doing right now is we're underneath the the peaches that we just planted this spring um, these are standard sized trees and my objective here underneath the comfrey is to get as much biomass as we can gather that up and just lie that down underneath these trees um, or even additional places in the yard just get as much biomass as we can whether that's weeds chop and dropping the comfrey here just gathering this up like i said and building some soil you know that's always a benefit we don't want to feed our trees our fruit trees particularly too much what you'll end up having is something like this my rosianca persimmon that gets really large really vigorous and doesn't fruit all that much so it's really important to not be feeding them but we can always build some soil always get down some nice covering over top of the soil i think that's really recommended especially in areas of your yard that maybe don't get as much sunlight also have poorer soils i think this is always a great idea for our fruit trees so i do this a couple times a year especially with the comfrey i mean this is kind of the sign of, you know the time of the year once the comfrey gets out of control i come in here and i chop and drop all the comfrey you know i'd recommend if you want to do this particularly you could do it before they flower uh, that way they don't you know really propagate themselves too much but if you let them flower the bees the bumblebees love the comfrey so it's a bit of a trade-off here uh, you know we can come in here and do this but then again you know there's always some repercussions of coming in here and taking away food potentially from our bees so i try not to do this too much too often but you can definitely do this um, maybe even like you know six or seven times a year with the comfrey so some of this actually has propagated itself over time and i'm trying to pull it out but once it's in there it's in there you know once it gets to a certain size good luck trying to get rid of it so i think the best scenario here is to pull out as much of this as i can try to get as much of the root mass and then leave in the select plants that i want and originally we had in this location i think four or so plants, four comfrey plants, and we have others in different sections of the yard. But I think in this section, I don't want it to get too out of control, right? This is in the front of our yard, and we're right on a, you know, the beginning of our busy street here. So I want the neighbors to appreciate this, right? And I think comfrey is actually a beautiful plant when well-maintained, well-kept, um, so what you can do is actually chop it back and cover this. That's what we're going to do is actually not only are we going to cover this with the biomass we have available. I mean, you can see all this stuff that's already here, but we're also going to have wood chips that we've got in a recent delivery. We're going to throw on the wood chips. We're going to make this look nice. Um, and then the comfrey is obviously going to grow back again. And we can do this, like I said, probably around six or seven times in my climate which is really nice. Now, some of this here, I think is just too, it's too big at this point. There's no ripping it out, you know? So the only, the best option here is actually to chop it down. This is gonna be here for a long time. And again, if you don't want this stuff, just make sure you don't plant it somewhere you don't want it. Uh, Cause it's really difficult to get rid of after it establishes itself. The roots go pretty deep. And it's just something that you're gonna struggle with. Here's a peach, doesn't look too good. But uh, this one, the birds probably got after this one and knocked it off and we'll have to dispose of that. But that's all I'm doing right now, guys. I'm coming in here, I'm thinning out the comfrey a little bit. I'm not gonna thin out all this. I'm not gonna chop and drop all this because I, I do want the bees to stick around and to have that food. See these tap roots on the comfrey? That's crazy. You know, they all look like that and they're even worse when they get older and bigger. But let me take you guys on a little bit of a journey now. I think what we're going to do is take a lot of this and dump it actually right here. So, but I want to take you guys on a little bit of a journey and show you some other areas of the yard that we could do this to and really benefit from adding some fertility to our soil, particularly new areas that we planted in. 
areas that we have some fruit trees that don't mind a little bit of a more fertile soil. Um, I find that if the soil is too fertile, they like to grow and grow and they don't fruit a whole lot. So there's a nice little balance that has to happen here. And you can see underneath these also freshly planted, this spring is a bunch of plums and apricots. I think there's even a peach in here. This is an area that I wanna cover up and really add some fertility to. Um, also in here, right, we've been adding in lots of straw and different things. Here's some weeds that I've been collecting. This is the comfrey that we, we added actually in the last video we did on talking about fertilizing. It's already pretty much broken down. I mean, this is what the comfrey, this is a comfrey stem right here, I think. Um, and this stuff really does break down quickly. I mean, in like three or four days, it's almost black. You know, it's almost already ready to go. And it's really acts as a nice, fast release fertilizer. This whole area here is gonna be covered in wood chips. This is a section that I would like to inoculate some mushrooms in. Unfortunately, we already have some straw down, so that may be a bit difficult, but we are gonna use King Strafaria for that patch there. So I've got a ton of wood chips I need to lay down and a lot of cardboard I wanna put down to cover up a lot of these weeds because if I take you guys over here, We've got sections of the yard that we've just been building up piles of mulch, really. Any piece of mulch we get, we stick it in this pile and it just breaks down over time. Yeah, it takes a long time, but um, behind it is this wood chip area that we've put down tons of wood chips in, um, all in an effort to obviously make the soil more fertile on this location. This whole area, this whole berm is just the worst soil because we, when we put this fence in when I was a kid, um, we really used some pitiful soil. I remember it very specifically, and now growing in it, I've realized it's even worse than I thought. But this whole wood chip area back in here was specifically inoculated with shiitake. So hopefully this will come through and not some other type of, uh, of mushroom that perhaps could already you know, beat it in terms of the inoculation process. Again, here's all the, this different material here. We can even add wood chips to this. Help speed this process up a little bit. Speed up this breakdown process. Around the tree, we actually put in a hugoculture bed around this black cherry tree. And uh, a lot of that's actually broken down. So there's a lot of material that needs to be added back in here. Same thing with this section of the yard. There's just so many weeds and look how much material We've been adding in underneath these peaches. I've done the same thing with the pawpaw, and finally in the fourth year of these pawpaw trees, they've finally gotten some size to them. And I think it has a lot to do with the comfort that we planted underneath it or next to it that we constantly chop and drop on top of the, the pawpaw, but also we build up the soil back here. This is an area of the yard that really doesn't get a whole lot of light and I think it's just a good idea. Just keep adding in the material. At some point, you know, enough is enough. You should have enough material. And then I think what we're gonna do is just call it quits in a way. Add in the cardboard. That's gonna kill all this um, organic material here that you see, all this, all this green stuff, all these weeds. That's gonna kill all those weeds. That's gonna break down as well. And then we're gonna throw on wood chips on top as many wood chips as I can get back here without breaking some of these trees or getting in here and getting this uh, taken care of. So um, it's gonna be a lot of work, but this is kind of the beginning of what it is that I have to do or even just wanna do, you know? Build up the material back in here. So that's kinda it, guys. I just wanted to show you this little process of how we're doing this, it really is this simple. I don't come in here with fertilizer. I don't come in here with, you know, just random things. This is, this is as easy as it gets, is just laying down material that then breaks down and forms into compost and feeds all these trees. You know, it's not like these container trees, guys. You know, it's a totally different story, totally different animal. And if I could do the same thing in these pots uh, and it made a lot of sense, I would. But, you know, it is what it is. So I wanna thank you guys for watching this one. And yeah, stay tuned for more. 
We'll see you for tomorrow's video, guys. Take care.